Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle. I took a month off of Games Workshop games to focus on other stuff. I got tons and tons of painting done. And what do I have in store next? I love Games Workshop games. I have thousands and thousands of points worth of Warhammer 40K armies, dozens and actually dozens and dozens of kill teams, 17 of which are painted, which I am very proud of. I also have a little Aeronautica Imperialis floating around. I would love to try Adeptus Titanicus. Uh, a little bit of War Cry in the works, and even a little Warhammer Underworlds. I'm dipping my toes into that. But I decided to take some time off to focus on other things, and I'm glad I did. One of my favorite things for painting, for improving painting quickly, is to paint other stuff, stuff that you're not used to painting. I am really good at painting Black Templar because I have painted hundreds and hundreds of black suits of power armor, and that has made me really good at painting black suits of power armor, but painting weird and other stuff, just it forces you to take on so many new painting challenges. And boy, did I have some painting challenges this month. The first thing I painted this month was a new crew for Malifaux, the Ki and Gong. They are very small, very delicate, very weird, get it, because weird makes Malifaux, miniatures, and it kind of unlocked my I want to paint really, really good brain because I do love getting stuff done and I love, you know, dry brushing, speed paint, army painting, good painting quickly. I just I love getting miniatures finished, but paint working really, really hard, spending about five hours per miniature was also kind of fun because I got to try really, really hard and see just how good I can paint. Some of these models, like little Chiyo Hamasaki, I really, really am proud of. And some of these miniatures, I definitely struggled with. Hinamatsu is a good example of that. I like how she turned out. I like how all these miniatures turned out, but I do think that I maybe have reached the limits of putting my brain onto the miniature. I think reference material would have actually helped a lot because her clothing is very flat. and. It's just because I don't know, like I'm, I had struggle with highlight and shadow. I think I, I plan on entering Golden Demon because one day, one day I'll have one of those ugly ass trophies. But to, to get it, I'm going to have to have like a perfect understanding of light and color. And so I think this is a really, really good step one because her clothing is pretty flat. And that's mostly because I washed it all. Washing is a wonderful, wonderful tool for just quickly shading the recesses. But if you do it everywhere, you can end up with a not super, super realistic way of doing clothing. You guys saw me paint all these up in a video. I'm really, really proud, proud of this team. I'm proud of all of my Malifaux miniatures because they're tiny little things that require so much precision and detail. And I just, ah, every, like if I had to get rid of all of my miniatures, like for some reason I have to get rid of everyone, that would be okay. I could get through that but letting go of my Malifaux teams would be really, really hard because I feel like I really poured my soul into these miniatures, but it unlocked. I wanted to paint really, really good. So the next thing that I painted was some Fallout Wasteland Warfare, the Securitrons. These are big Lego blocks and are super easy to paint. And so I tried dry brushing. I don't do a lot of dry brushing, but I got to the chance to meet Byron over at Artist Opus, and he showed me a thing or two about dry brushing. And I'm really, really happy with how these turn out. And I have actually been incorporating dry brushing into the rest of my painting because there's there's dry brushing is a lie. You don't really want to dry brush with dry paint. And it actually makes sense. Like you just hear dry brushing over and over and over and you see it so often in tutorials. I was like, yeah, you dip your dry brush into paint and then you scrub it on the model as fast as you can. And then the, the dry paint sticks, but actually only the wet paint sticks to the model. And so and then the as it dries, it just kind of crumbles and you get that dust. You actually are applying a billion tiny strokes of wet paint. And so you want that paint thinned and you want it exactly the right consistency where the wet paint is being deposited on the miniature. It is not just sticking, but you're you're painting with a million tiny little brushes and that that big old makeup brush. 
It's a tricky, tricky painting technique, but it can do some really, really good results really, really quickly. I actually base coated these guys brown and then just slowly worked my way up through shades of blue to make some really interesting and subtle uneven changes across the surface. And that I think is what made the, makes these guys look good because I, if I wasn't planning on dry brushing them, I think I would have just airbrushed them blue and then gone from there, but I wouldn't have gotten all of those subtle little things happening inside of the armor. Dry brushing. Dry brushing is one of those things that I think everybody should have in their toolbox because every mini is different. Those Malifaux minis could not be dry brushed. Holy cow. It would not really work because they don't have those sorts of raised details. But these Securitrons do. And I, I love painting and I love getting things done. So having all the tools in my tool belt to get things done quickly is great because then I can just knock stuff out. But actually, let's stay on Fallout Wasteland Warfare for a second. I painted 11 miniatures for Fallout Wasteland Warfare, which is quickly becoming my favorite game. I don't know if it's a great game. It's full of weird, weird rules and tokens, although it has an excellent combat system. But it's giving me a lovely opportunity to try out all sorts of new things, and it's getting me really pumped to dive back into my Warhammer 40k collection, which is, holy cow, the pile of shame for, for 40k is massive. But my pile of shame for all of these other smaller games is quickly moving downwards. Although once I strike a balance between all of these different games, it'll kind of mean that I'm just crawling towards the finish line for all of these things, because I don't know if you guys know this, but I have a, a you know, a fairly reasonable collection of miniatures, but I worked on blending for these guys because when I was at Adepticon and I saw all of the beautiful Golden Demon entries in the case, one thing that really stood out was how beautiful some people's blends were. Their transitions between colors and their transitions within colors from dark to light are buttery. And I think one thing that I have definitely learned is I lack patience because I know that those blends take a very long time and many, many steps in between to get those buttery smooth blends. And I tried it on the heads of these robo brains and they, there's, a, there's a transition there. There is a change in color value from kind of a dark orange on the edge to an almost white right on the top of the dome. But I did it in probably five steps where really, if I want those buttery, buttery transitions, it should be more like 25 steps to get there. It's definitely good enough for these Robo Brains who I've been playing in games of Fallout Wasteland Warfare and uh, not great. They have some they have some good damage potential and tons and tons of wounds. But um, man, Legat Lanius is just running through all of the figures I've painted. But to finish off Fallout Wasteland Warfare, I painted these two miniatures, the Nightkin. The super mutants who are left over from the master from the first Fallout game. And I tried so hard on these guys. I, I don't like it when projects drag on. And so I spent like an hour every night working on these guys and it took a week. But I really, really am proud of how these turned out. They're certainly better than the actual in-game models, which isn't saying much because Fallout New Vegas is kind of an old game but I worked so hard on these guys to try to get their faces right and to try to get the muscles right. And once again, just like um, the my Malifaux miniatures, I think I'm at the point where I need some reference because I had screenshots of Fallout New Vegas on my computer screen, really just to get the colors right for these characters. But really, I should have had like pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger up on my computer, all oiled up and glistening so that I could really see like how the light interacts with all of these different pieces of anatomy. Because the muscles are fine, but they're not perfect. And these Fallout miniatures are giving me the opportunity because they're all different and they're all unique and they're all ridiculous. They're giving me a great opportunity to try out and to push myself further because all of these things that I'm learning, I can pour right back into my armies. Every little thing Every little trick I learn is something that I can maybe do on another miniatures because I have, I mean, I have a Dark Eldar army I'm working on. I still have about 3000 points of Black Templar that need painting. My orcs need tons and tons of love. You know, these guys, they look a little orcish. Those muscles are going to help me paint some orc boys, maybe even a little some Gretchen because I have about 30 Gretchen that I need to paint for my list. 
But man, I am very, very proud of these Nightkin. I love the Nightkin from Fallout New Vegas. I remember the, the what's the, it's, I think it's an unmarked quest called S Screams in the Night or the Screams, Wails of Brahmin, where if you just wait for midnight to happen, you can get an event where you're fighting a Nightkin. Ah, it's just great. The Nightkin. Ooh, but speaking of bluish skin tone muscles, I painted this little pig warrior from Relic Blade. And this guy was probably a four hour paint job. And I really, really struggled. He is, did you ever, when like it, it's a little toy that you can sometimes find at like convenience stores or hardware stores where it's a rubber ball with water inside, inside of, a, of some mesh and you squeeze it and then little pimples pop out from in between the mesh. That's kind of what his muscles look like. I painted these muscles over and over and over to try to get it to look right because the first time I painted him, I wish I took a picture. The first time I painted him, he looked like one of those balls with just a little pimple sticking out of it. It was just every recess was dark blue and every ray surface was light blue. And that's it didn't look right, especially because he's so he's a single piece of metal. And so he just looked like a ball. It didn't look like a shoulder, an arm, a head and a hand. It just looked like a ball of mush. So this guy was definitely a worthwhile painting job. And I have a bunch more miniatures for Relic Blade. I have four heroes and four villains that come in the starter set for that game. And so each one is going to give me another little opportunity to try some things out on. But it is, it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile to try out all of these different things. And his sword, I try to do. I, I have since, I think I have mastered sort of the power sword, the classic transition from white to blue to black with a little bit of magic in between. But I think I go too intense with the variation between color values because it starts to look a little silly, which is appropriate for Warhammer 40K. You know, I don't know why, but I try to paint so realistically whenever I'm not painting for Warhammer 40K. And I think it's just because Warhammer 40K miniatures are built in such a way to be really, really good painting projects. Like Synthwave looks good on 40K miniatures. Grimdark looks good on 40K miniatures. Classic retro edge highlight. Every single surface looks good on miniatures. I, for some reason with my 40K stuff, I feel like I have full license to do anything I want to those miniatures. But on other miniatures, I feel like I want to make them look exactly like they do in the artwork. And usually since it's not 40K, there's not been hundreds and hundreds of different artists who have worked on this project over the course of the last 36 years. There's usually only a couple of pieces of reference. And so I feel obligated to try to match the reference as closely as I can. And sometimes that results in Pig Dude. And I am very proud of Pig Dude. He's a great little Pig Dude. After Pig Dude, I worked on some vehicles and you guys saw these in a video. And actually there is 34 other miniatures that are not in this video, but they are painted up and y'all might see that on Wednesday, a whole army of a little something something. But these miniatures, the Star Wars Legion, big, big stuff has got me pumped for vehicles, which is great because I have two Primaris transports, the Gladiator tanks, the Incursor tanks, the Subjugator tanks, the Futuristic tanks, whatever they are, I'm excited to paint them up, but I'm nervous because this model is awesome, but it's light and colorful and light and colorful is really, really easier to do to make things look really, really nice because it's all self-evident. It reads well, the light reflects off of it right back in your eyes and you can see all the little details, but black vehicles are scaring me. I, but I've discovered a trick to vehicles and the trick to vehicles is base coat and then you take a dry brush and you just dry brush the heck out of it and you stipple and you get as much variety as you can on these big, flat, boring sections and it makes them so much more interesting. So I think my plan for those Black Templar vehicles, and you'll definitely see it in a video, is maybe invert it. So with this guy, I did a dark oil wash over everything and that filled in all the little cracks and outline stuff. And I definitely want to get that effect 
but inverted for black armor. So my black Templars are based with a tan base, which I might be changing to a more yellow paint, a uh, yellow scheme. I think I'm gonna actually try to revamp my Black Templar a little bit for 10th edition because right now they've all been painted over the course of the last like 11 years in all different phases of my painting journey. And so I think I would like to just set them all out on the table and give them each a little TLC to maybe make them a little bit more coherent on the tabletop. But for my Black Templar vehicles, which are bad right now, I have rhinos and a couple of other things and they're pretty lame. But I think if I oil wash them, with a tan or a yellow tan and then wipe almost all of it away, I think I'll get the the opposite where I've got this black tank and all of my little edges are outlined in a light color. I think that might be the move for some Black Templar vehicles, which will be great because I have so many of them and I have to paint them all up. And I think that painting these was the thing I needed to do to get better at painting black armor, or at least give me ideas, actionable ideas that I can then take and put towards my Black Templar army. So thank you, party bus. You, you, I, hopefully I will use you to beat Sean finally in Star Wars Legion. And I also painted this, the L-A-A-T-L-E patrol ship, which number one is the most annoying thing in the entire world that this is called the L-A-A-T because that is also the name of everyone's favorite ship in Star Wars, the clone gunship. So when you try to look for this thing online, all you get is page after page after page of the arguably much cooler clone dropship. But this is really more so than a vehicle, a diorama with the little stormtroopers jumping out of the sides and riding down these little ropes. And I think it brings so much life to the vehicle. And it definitely helps that it's got this big old base on there and it's a flyer. And so you've got that extra room to hide stuff or to put things that make the miniature more interesting. But I think that also might be a thing I bring to my vehicles going forward is actually having duders operating and inside the vehicle that you can see to make it a little bit more interesting to look at because sometimes, well, generally vehicles are boxes and Black Templar vehicles are black boxes like on airplanes. They're just lame, but the little crew having having little stories being told within the model because you tell stories on actual miniatures a little blood splatter on the sword crazy eyes textures you can tell all of these amazing stories on characters but on vehicles it's harder to tell those stories and so actually including geysos in your vehicles is a great way to tell the story and to make your miniatures interesting and to make them just jump out at you and so i am definitely going to be bringing that to some of the vehicles that I have for my 40K collections. I really, really like how this big old flyer turned out. This thing is the size of an Imperial Knight. I don't know if it reads that big, but it is huge. It is a humongous flyer that I can only hold like this with my little tiny fingers on the base rim, or I can pinch it. It's like I'm picking up a bird. I gotta pick it up just in the exact right spot and really hope that I don't drop it. As I move it across the table, it is preposterous as a miniature, which all big things are. The Imperial Knights are a disaster. I've broken so many of the little pieces of armor off of my Imperial Knights as I push them around the table. By the way, Imperial Knights, one of the best things to have as a loner model for games. It's so easy to just hand that one thing to your buddy and be like, yeah, you got a gun, you got a fist and you got feet. Just go to town and they're tough. They're not going to die in like one round of combat. They're really, really fun models. And so is this vehicle. Also the tinting of the glass. It saddens my heart that I really can't see the cockpit and the piles that I worked so hard on. But that evil red eye it works so well. I might have to try out some different materials. I used a um, Badger Minotaur Ghost Tint color which worked, but the only problem is I applied it through the airbrush. And so while I was spraying one side, dusty paint was hitting the other side. And so the, the bottom of it is pretty darn crystal clear because that was nice and wet, but overspray was hitting the top part of it and that kind of frosted a little bit. I would have run into other problems if I had applied it with a brush because then I would have gotten brush strokes. So I don't know the perfect solution to tinting plastic Perfectly, it might just be a situation of if you're spraying something shaped like a bowl, 
you're just going to have a hard time. Or maybe it's a situation of like, I absolutely spray the bejesus out of it and then turn it upside down and like pour out the excess paint. But then I'll get trippies. It's so hard. You just have to experience everything to figure any figure any of this stuff out. This is really what it takes. But man, good old, good old vehicles. I'm actually jazzed to paint vehicles, which is never true. I don't, I, I, before painting these two models, I didn't like painting vehicles. I knew I didn't. I didn't like putting them together. I like dudes. I like seeing a swarm of bodies, but you need vehicles. They do add something special to the game. And now that I have gotten a chance to work on these suckers, I am actually excited to work on some vehicles. I think the first vehicles I will paint are probably my Centurion war suits. They count. They definitely count as vehicles because I have three Centurion war suits and they're probably my favorite Space Marine models of all time. And I have three more on sprue. So I think I definitely want to get those painted up because if I'm going to be, I think the first game of 10th edition I'm going to play is Indomitus, the old starter box for 9th edition because it'll force me to get everything painted because I really should have that entire box painted up before 10th edition comes out and I buy a bunch of the 10th edition boxes. So I think my first game of 10th edition will definitely be the Indominus versus, you know, Space Marines versus the Necrons from the Indominus box. But the second game of 10th edition I play, I think will definitely be some Centurion spam. The last thing I managed to do in other games April was just build some stuff. It would have been fun to get it all painted up, but man, there just aren't enough hours in the day. But I got all of our Armada fleets put together. Nick helped get them all cleaned and prepped. Right now, they're just sticky tacked together so that I can actually get at these sales. I've got a, uh, a James Wapple playlist ready to go because he painted up tons and tons of these miniatures with oils. I'm going to keep the experimentation going because I painted, I've painted with oils in the past. It didn't go well. But if at first you don't succeed, I guess you just you keep trying. <laughs> I think that's how it goes. But because I can whip these up with I could whip these up with acrylic so easily. But I want to try. I want to try to get really, really good at oils because just like dry brushing, I want to have it in my toolbox. So I have about 30 <laughs> little tiny boats. Actually, they're not really that tiny. Let's see. Bill Ogden is probably about the size of a guardsman. And this guy, this boat is probably three bills. Bill, 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 Bill Nye, the science guy. Okay, I'm having too much fun. These boats are really, really fun and will be another fun painting project because essentially these are vehicles. So I think I'm going to learn an awful lot on these boats. A little annoying to put together. They're all resin and I love, I love resin miniatures, but plastic is so so, so much better. It's way harder to make plastic miniatures because you just sculpt a resin miniature, cut the arms off, cast it, you're ready to rock and roll. Where plastic, you have to figure out how to explode them, flatten them, and then have it where they can all be reassembled. It's, it's an amazing amount of work to make a plastic miniature, but 30 boats, maybe, maybe next, by next year. You know what? Let's set a time frame. How long is each boat going to take me? Maybe two hours? Two hours times there, oh my goodness. <laughs> it is gonna take a while, but we've gotten to play this game a couple of times and it's really fun. It's got X-Wing vibes, although it's got more rules than X-Wing. It's probably a good in-between, like a classic 40K style, large scale skirmish game and a smaller, tighter game like X-Wing, where it's just move, shoot, move, shoot, move, shoot. It's a really, really fun game and it's all about boats. 31 miniatures completed, plus the 34 that are for the video coming up. 65 miniatures. I think 65 painted miniatures is a really strong number for one month. April has been a ton of fun. And speaking of the month of April, every single month over on our Patreon, we come out with a brand new STL terrain pack. And this month we have the Twisted Train Station, a devilish depot, perfect for skirmish games like Kill Team, Malifo, or anything else you can think of. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give us some ideas and critiques of how to improve their painting. We host live Discord hangouts and we have a new tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines, maybe even a vehicle once I get some of those painted up. Other games April has been tons and tons of fun. It's not even done yet. I might get a couple extra figures done before the end of the month. Thanks for watching.